Electric Goo here. Someone had posted a comment on the one video that I did on the Alienware PC and they had wanted some instructions on installing Puppy Linux in a frugal install alongside Windows XP. So we're going to talk about that today and I will show you a walkthrough on how to do that. It's relatively simple. Just a few choices you need to make and it will install Puppy in a container file instead of have, having to partition your drive out. So I have an old Inspiron 6000 laptop that we're going to install Puppy Linux 32 in a frugal install within Windows XP. I have the ISO burnt to a CD. So let's go ahead with the install here. And here we go. Now I have two gigabytes of RAM on this old PC. One gigabyte works really well with Puppy in this configuration. I haven't tried it with less. I'm not sure whether it could fit all the files into RAM because Puppy actually runs out of RAM. We have to give it a couple minutes here while it loads up its files. Now a slower uh, CPU this would even take longer to load these files in. So be patient. It'll be a little quicker, well a lot quicker loading from the hard drive. So I've included this boot up just so you know what to expect when you're doing this frugal install. Make sure you have a cup of coffee handy. There we go at the boot up screen. Bionic Pup 32. U Pup Bionic Beaver. Now we're not going to do anything with this quick setup because we're going to install it. So let's cancel everything here. I think there's one more screen that we got to click OK on. Just a uh, information screen. You can read that on your own. OK. To do the install, you click Applications and you go to Setup and you scroll down to the Puppy Installer And user universal installer is what we want to choose for this. We want to install it to the internal hard drive. And we're install again, it's a confirmation of drive SDA. Now Linux is a little different if you're not used to it. In Windows you would see drive C, D, E, and so forth. In Linux it's SDA for the hard drives, in this case SDA1. So the next thing to do in any Linux installation is to have Gparted set up a partition 
and install Linux, but we're not going to do that. We're going to install it right alongside in the Windows in a container file. Now you see this option is grayed out, but we need to check this checkbox. It says check this box to enable the button to install to your Windows installation partition is what we're going to do. So this is highlighted now. We'll go ahead and click that. Confirmation is click OK. And you can name the folder anything you want. We're just going to leave it at the default today. It has to copy the files from the CD to the folder it created. And we'll give it a couple minutes here. Maybe we can fast forward through that. Okay, files are done copying. Next thing, we have to install the bootloader, which is Grub for DOS, so that we can choose between Windows and Puppy Linux upon boot up. So we're going to click on yes. <clears throat> Give it a minute to load up the files. Now we're not going to change anything here, we're just going to click OK, leave it at the defaults, at the Grub for DOS config, and we're not going to change anything here, we're going to leave this default, and final confirmation screen, I'm going to click OK, and we're not going to edit menu at this point. I'll show you why you might want to do that later. Okay, we are finished with the install of the files and finished with Grub. Now the next thing we want to do is shut down. We can either uh, use the click on the button up in the corner or go down to the applications and click on leave down there doesn't matter either way we're going to shut down now we want to save the session first shut down no because we're going to boot back into Linux again from the hard drive we will do that later So uh, we need to move, remove our CD, and we're going to boot back up again. Now we're going to load right into Grub, and you see we have the option to go to Puppy or Windows. We're going to boot back into Puppy. Now again, this very first run off the hard drive will be a little slower, but the second time we do it, it will boot up a little faster. And we come to the boot up screen. I like to not save the session on the first shutdown as we did, just to make sure that everything is okay and puppy boots up. Then when we 
boot up the first time, we can uh, save a few things. The graphics is already set. We don't need to do anything there. If you want to change your time zone, you can do that here. Since we're on Eastern Time, let's go down. Whoops, I passed it up. Let me find it. New York Eastern Time. Click OK. And we can choose to have the clock synchronized through the network every every setup if we wish. close and if you want to set up an internet connection you can do so by clicking on the green tab we're not going to do that right now let's exit this now we want to exit puppy one more time and make our save files let's leave shut down now we're going to save because we know everything's working. At this screen, just choose the default, which is administrator. And no encryption. You can encrypt it if you wish, but we're not going to encrypt it. And the file system we're going to choose is the Linux file system ext4. It is the safest and the newest at this point. I think they're working on a newer file system. Which would probably be included in future versions of Puppy. Click OK. Now we have to choose a save file size. In a frugal install you can choose up to 4 gigabyte save file. Well, that will give you plenty of room to install some applications if you wish. If you're using Puppy just to access the internet and such when you have a Windows XP install uh, maybe you don't need a file that big. Uh, at this point I'll just choose one gigabyte for now. That can actually be changed later. You can increase it but you can't decrease it. So we're just going to choose one gigabyte for now. And you can change the name of the save file. We're just going to leave it as a default at this point. Final sanity check. Yes, save. So now it's creating that one gigabyte save file. Again, you, if you have a slower PC, it may take a while, especially if you save it 4 gigabyte save file, which is the maximum which you may want to do if you have the drive space. No problem there. Let's fast forward. Okay, the next thing it's going to ask you is to create a swap file. So we're going to create a 64 megabyte swap file. You can make that different sizes, but for now, let's just 64 megabyte seems to run fine and we're shutting down again okay let's reboot again Now you notice the countdown timer going down here. We can change that countdown. If you move the menu around, that countdown timer stops. And you could also, I'll show you how to change 
change the menu file so that Windows is the first choice if you wish. But let's go back into Puppy here. Now you notice we're loading a swap file which wasn't there before and the save file. Of course if you have a bigger save file and a slower computer it would take just a little bit longer to load. Alright, we're booted up. Has a lot of options on Puppy. You even have a, uh, we're not connected to the internet, but it's reading the CPU temps. And uh, let's look at editing a few things. Now, <clears throat> again, Linux uses a different format to identify drives and in Windows you would see drive C, D, E and so forth. They use the SDA format for files. And here you have all your folders and you can, we again can see where Puppy installed its folder. Now this menu LST Let's open that as a text file. Now, if you notice in the line here, there's that timeout. You can change that timeout to, it's at 10 seconds now, you can change it to three seconds if you wish for a faster boot up, whatever you decide to put it, you just have to catch the screen quickly to uh, scroll to whatever OS you want to. S now you could also copy or cut and let's go down here and let's paste here and what we did was in the menu we moved the Windows option to be first in line and the puppy option second. Now we can change that timeout, I'll show you. Now let's change it to three seconds. And so within three seconds, it will automatically boot into Windows. Let's click Save. Close. Let's close. Close here. Oh, also, you can do just about anything. If you want to go to the Internet, they do have a nice uh, light web browser based on Mozilla built into this or you can install the full-blown Firefox. I would suggest using a 4 gigabyte save file so you can install a few apps you need. There's uh, the light browser. Let's go down and do a reboot now. And When we reboot you either click there or you can click up here. For your options you will see windows as first choice in the menu and within three seconds windows will boot if we don't touch any keys
Now you see Windows is first choice. One in three seconds, Windows boots. Unless you hit a key to change it to popping. And we're booted up into Windows XP. And let's go to Drive C. And see, I have this set folder options for hidden. Let's see what shows up. <clears throat> let's change the view back to normal. I'm just out of curiosity. I can't remember if Linux hides those files. No. There's that menu first. You can change, even edit that in Windows if you wish. But here is the folder that Puppy's in. There is the Puppy Swap file. And there's the Save file which we made, which is one gigabytes, which you might want to uh, change the four. Now you can increase that if you wish later on during your XP install, but that's about it. So you can still play around with XP if you have on an older computer and